Hello, everyone, and welcome to Season 2 of the World with Nate podcast. This podcast was created to shed light on some of the stories and lessons that we accrue during our time here. My hope is that those stories will bring us all together in this thing that we all call life. My hope for this podcast episode is that you find it both enlightening and enjoyable. So sit back and relax. I want you to enjoy the ride. Special thanks to my friend Buck Kurt of Hawkeye Storage and Consulting for helping me bring Season 2 of The World with Nate to YouTube. Hello everyone and welcome back to Season 2 of The World with Nate. A lot of times when I'm picking guests, the guests are swayed by the audience, what others want to hear. For this guest, it's awesome because this is someone who I admire with everything. He is doing stuff that I want to be doing, so to have the ability to have him on and talk, it means a lot to me. So, without further ado... Scotty Russell, thank you for coming on The World with Nate. Hey, man. Thanks for uh, having me here. It's funny. Usually the roles are reversed and I'm asking people questions. So it's, uh, it's cool to be on the hot seat. So yeah. Thanks for the kind words. So with that, you know, you have a podcast. That's, not, that's one of the many things that you do. I uh, came to know of you when I first moved back to this area. There was talk of you. You were doing creative work on the side with a full-time job. What did that look like? So all I've ever known is doing something on the side. I was kind of like always having that uh, internal itch that needed to be scratched. I just didn't buy into the nine to five grind into your 60s. So I've always been doing something on the side. It was always like art based creative. Um, Instagram is kind of where I got my spot and my start. After college, I had a really rough time finding my groove. I was pretty depressed, couldn't get a job for like three years. So always doing stuff on the side. Right uh, out of college? Right out of college. Warper graduated in 2010. Horrible portfolio, but I had a very strong victim mentality there, and I felt like I was owed something. My work sucked. My work ethic sucked. My portfolio sucked. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> and I just relied on knowing people to get jobs in the past, and so I, I was hit hard with reality, um, and I had, to, I had to grow up big time and had to learn how to like take initiative and – get hungry and take some action. And that was a really, really rough time, but I needed that. That taught me a very important life lesson of not yeah. expecting things, not entitled the world doesn't owe you anything. And so that showed me how to get to work. Went from working at Newton's Cafe because I couldn't get okay. a job. I was serving at a restaurant, coaching high school football. Um, then I started personal training, just trying to figure out this coaching route, but also I like to create and finally got my big boy job working corporate at Viking through IDEX Corporation and just really started pushing my side hustle from there. But in the past, I was doing like a t-shirt clothing company for like four years, building that out of the side right out of college, um, doing tattoos, doing logos for people, just doing any kind of odd job I could, but nothing felt like it was like gaining traction. And then finally at all, all those years of failing yeah. came together where which left me to that next path of like perspective collective. And that's where I started drawing like crazy, growing an audience on Instagram, started blogging, which turned into public speaking. There's a lot of freelance in there, a lot of selling merch, a lot of affiliates, a lot of sponsors, yeah. um, podcasting then turned into coaching. And now that's what I do today is full-time coaching. It's been a really long road and that was a long winded answer. <laughs> yeah, that's a, we got a lot there. Yeah, that, that was a lot. There was a, a, a short story compacted. When we're talking about the failures, mm -hmm. it would have been real easy to give up during that time and stuck with the nine to five. Oh, absolutely. What kept you motivated during that time period to keep doing the work? You said freelance stuff. That stuff doesn't pay the bills. No, at, at the time, like it was good side hustle money. And I clawed myself into a big hole of debt and then I woke up and realized like, wow, um, I can't ever do my thing full time if I want to just be in debt. So yeah. me and my wife got really pissed off one summer. It's like, I'm making all this extra side hustle income on top of my day job. Where's this money going? Yep. And that would have been 2019. And I got really mad, really, really focused. And we paid off like over a hundred thousand dollars worth cool. of debt in like a year and a half, like Hell just yeah. grinding. And that, that really changed everything about me and then i really got into like the investing scene and taking control of not only my art my effort but like my finances as well and realizing like wow 
you know, society wires us to right be a certain be way, smart. right? Yeah, financial literacy. So I'm like, okay, this is an area of focus, and that changed a lot. That paved a, a path for me to do my thing full time, even though I wasn't ready when corporate eliminated our entire marketing department after saying like, hey, your job is safe. It wasn't, but all that me taking control paved the way for me to like take the leap. I was prepared, but I wasn't ready. Hell yeah. By all Are the we mindset. ever? No, exactly. You'll, <laughs> you'll never be ready. And that's a big thing I work on with students too, is put yourself in a position to hedge your bet against uncertainty in this world. There's no such thing as a safe day job. Build something of your own on the side. That's what I'm really passionate about. And that, that gives you freedom to do things on your own Hell terms. Yeah. That gives you financial freedom one day, time freedom, freedom against the system that keeps you trapped until your 60s and has you believe in like hey life begins when you retire, retire then, yeah. then you get to do your thing and i'm like that's when it's fun that that didn't that didn't settle with me so that that's what fuels me is showing other people there's there's a different route you can take than what we've been fed exactly especially exactly. people our age it seemed like coming out of high school you know if you didn't go to college you're gonna die <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, and, and i remember it. working the corporate game and i was the only one doing anything on the side and i'd go to work and was like uh monday uh, another Monday. Oh, two more days until Friday. Happy Don't we get Friday, the weekend, everyone. Yeah. Happy Friday. Everybody's just living for the weekends. I'm like, damn, I love Mondays. Mondays, I get to like start fresh. I wake up early. I grind on my own stuff before I come here and have you all put your negative energy on me. <laughs> Bog me down. Yeah, I'm like, no, I'll grind in the mornings. I'll grind on my lunch breaks. I'll grind on my two 10 minute breaks and I'll, I'll build something here just yeah. because I'm like, I, I didn't think being from Iowa, you had that ability to build something because all my friends like like ben haggerty a good friend of mine he uprooted and went to cali and found his success uh his success and everybody i met online lived in bigger cities because you're an iowa kid yeah i'm an iowa boy i'm waterloo hell yeah waterloo boy east or west west high okay yeah so shout out yep. so yeah so now i live in cedar falls my wife was a, <laughs> yeah. a cedar falls tiger and she was like a cheerleader when i was playing sports against cedar falls yeah and she those cheerleaders were ruthless talking smack on the sidelines sure, so dude. i remember her on the sidelines and there's like a photo of me in the the paper the newspaper making a killer one-handed catch against cedar falls it was of dumb. course we were up at <laughs> halftime and then we got smoked so it doesn't of matter course. but it's like her in the background of the newspaper with the other cheerleaders as i'm making them play i'm like wow there there see, she babe? is so <laughs> see babe but like yeah that. they were just talking so much smack i never thought i'd live in cedar falls i'm not i live in cedar falls so it's oh, kind of yeah. weird. Yeah, it's weird how the wild wor yeah. world works. My parents still live in Waterloo, so I'm still a Waterloo boy at heart. I like it. I like you it. want to make my city proud. Hell yeah. yeah. I like that too because I live right on right on the edge and we're Waterloo address and I'm the same way, dude. I, I like that, having that, that inside feeling of wanting to do your city proud. Yeah, it's, it's like a little chip on my shoulder Fuck every yeah. day. It's like, Waterloo, okay, yep. I, I live in an area where definitely far from where I grew up. Like where I grew up, you couldn't leave your bike out, your door unlocked your garage unlocked people breaking into your stuff and now it's like people kids leave their bikes out in the street yeah. and their garage open <laughs> i'm like bring it back this to isn't house. this I, I don't feel like i belong here so i still have that chip on my shoulder and that's a big part of me for yeah. sure i have no one to impress but also i like just want to show like good things come out of waterloo too yeah yeah mm -hmm. and we had spoke offline you know being iowa people and the venture the occupations that we are choosing it wasn't norm 2010 and beyond and now you know hopefully we're part of making that change and showing the next generation exactly and i admit most of my momentum has come online outside of waterloo you know i tried to build here tried to do freelance but i didn't feel like what i was doing was valued at what i know i was putting in investing yeah. in myself and so i had to build outside yeah so when you're asking for me to come in, I'm like, I don't think anybody around here even knows what I do because everything I do is not here, not here right. anymore when it used to be. You know, I used to host like drink and draws. I used to do a lot of freelance and murals around here. But where I was able to make a bigger impact and serve people just came outside of Iowa. You yeah. know, and it trickles down here a little bit. So, right. Yeah. yeah. And you started here. You know, this is home. Exactly. And you've, you've chose to remain here. Yeah. When you could have families here. I, I, I just like showing like you can – location doesn't matter you right. could it, you can choose yourself you want better. it bad enough exactly everybody has a phone a smartphone you can literally build your brand in your business via this little tiny computer <laughs> in your pocket and whatever resource you have you can build you don't need this fancy mic setup right. you don't need the fancy camera you have 
a resource here and you can build anything you want. We're very fortunate in that oh, regard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you know, like we're we're around the same age, I'm assuming, millennial. Yep. Like I, I'm blessed to have had dial up internet. <laughs> yeah, see my grandma's block cell phone <laughs> yeah. in her car. Same. You know, ring the the phone system where you dial it with your finger. Like yeah. I'm so blessed to see this progression. Progression. So it like just lets me know like how can I always see what the younger generation is doing? How can I always be ahead of the curve and leverage that within my business of providing opportunities for creatives to stay ahead of the game. I like that. Yeah. It's like, I like, I like tech, you know, I've always liked that stuff. You're so into it. I'm into it. Yeah. Uh, did you ever feel like you were living in two different lives? I know you were a Wartburg football player and being the football, did that always jive with your tech, with your passion for tech? So I, I at the time I thought it was weird. I thought it was a disadvantage, but at Warburg, I was like the creative jock. I was in, you know, fine art and communication graphic design classes for my double majors. And, but then I lived like the jock sports life yeah. too. And, but then it wasn't, you know, I just had my desktop computers or maybe a laptop graphic design programs drawing on sketch pads and stuff. And then all of a sudden the iPad, yeah. you know, was invented and that changed everything for me. And, you know, then crypto back in the day and now yeah. NFTs and just so many different opportunities and different lanes and then social media comes around. So if I catch wind of something new, I like to study it first. Otherwise, everything's a scam to me. Right. I just don't try. I have trust issues. Yeah. Um, but then I just if I find something that that could be a tool, I'm like, OK, let me let me learn everything I can about it before deciding if this is something I can use or not. We spoke about investing time in areas that are important. And you talked to me about this year being a year where you felt like that was something that you were focusing on. When you're talking about investing the time, one of the areas, cryptocurrency, I'm not very familiar with it. We have people who are on the side of, yeah, what's well, better life earnings on crypto. And then you have some people who are like, it's a scam. Uh, I was originally one. This is not financial advice here, anyone. So right, yeah, in, this is In a down market, guys people are going to be like, oh, man, this guy's crazy. Look, look at the well, market. Well, I know you're not crazy because I've seen what your NFTs are going for. I've looked, I've watched your auctions. I've thought Thank about you. buying them, but so I know you're not crazy. But I, I got back into crypto 2017. I originally thought it was a scam. I bought at the top. I didn't understand market cycles, market sentiment. I didn't understand how whale games and manipulation, but anything that involves money in financial markets, there's manipulation everywhere. Like right. in gold, silver markets, yep. JP Morgan's always getting slapped on with like any market is going to be some kind of manipulation. So it's not a scam. Right. And it's just, I'm big on the little guy, the underdog, having a chance, having power, you know, getting to take control of things. And to me, once I learned what Bitcoin was, I was like, whoa, that like goes against everything that tr tr the traditional systems are trying to place on a saying like, this is the only way here's a money printer. Let's yep. just print new money. Let's hurt the middle class. Let's, you know, drive inflation and outprice everybody on everything. Let's keep the poor, poor and the rich, richer. And I'm like, <laughs> that's what Bitcoin was invented for. And I became fascinated. Yeah. To do the exact there. opposite. Yeah. It's like anybody, anybody on the street with five bucks can invest in an asset that is limited, hard, finite, scarce. It's the most scarce asset. You can't make more of it. There's no magical. It's, digital internet fake money but we live in a digital society correct anyway like, what's your bank account at your bank ones and zeros exactly and you're getting like point nothing. zero one percent <laughs> to hold your money, money in there a dollar to grow it and then they're taking that money and then lending making it and trillions it have you seen the work. banks in our area yeah it's like yeah so that anything that goes against a traditional system is probably something that highlights for scott probably is going to entice me where i want to know more because i just don't like being force fed this is the path you know I, just something wasn't right about you got to go to college you got to get a good degree to get a job you probably don't like to grind it building someone else's dream until you retire <laughs> yeah. but yep. you got to get a family a mortgage a van and everything yeah. else in between <laughs> that just hey, easy on you know i got a van so don't <laughs> be know. taking jabs well, at well, me Scotty. one day we'll probably have a van too hey. um just that whole this is how it has always been this is how it is that doesn't that fires me up something about that has always gotten under my skin and i'm like mm, but i feel like i could do it this way or i feel like maybe this way or i see people doing it this way why can't i versus like when i used to be like okay i'll just 
yep. suck it up and take it. Like I had people telling me all the time, like, why do you, why do you do all this? You know, like how much money are you making? You're not even making that much. And that was the early days of the side hustle. You got a safe day job. You got benefits. Like what, what else could you why? buy? Why? P- people don't understand it. And I think it's because maybe they didn't have people nurturing them or they don't have anything they're excited about or limiting self beliefs or stories they tell yourself, which I dealt with all of that. Oh yeah. Same. You know, it's, and it's a lot of self stuff. Exactly. It has nothing even to do with you and your dreams it, and what you're doing. This whole game of life is choice and perspective. And it's just a game of us against ourselves at the end of the day 100%. and then feeding into internal critic and external naysayers and non-believers for, real. for sure. So for me, it's a, a, it's a, it's an act of rewiring my mind personal development saved me. I was very uh, suicidal after college, rock bottom. Things were, things were not fun. And so that was like, if I can claw back, rewire, make things happen, find a path, why can't someone else? So Mm -hmm. I want to like teach what I've learned over the years, but definitely through the lens of personal development first versus like external vanity metrics of, I'm going to show you how to build a very profitable business and get a lot of followers and have people love you and your work. Like that's all stuff that's out of your control. Let's focus on what you can control Absolutely. first. Build the foundation, connect with what you're doing, learn how to market yourself in a non-gross way. Non-gross, yeah. In a non-gross <laughs> salesy way. Like you can sell what you're doing without selling what you're doing. And so that to me, just the art of marketing, selling, pitching, presenting, but doing it through a lens of value, impact, providing solutions through your creative gifts like that's pretty cool that's, yeah. that's dope to me it's like you may think what you're drawing in a sketchbook is just something f- that is just for you but you want to build something you just don't know how i can show you how to understand the value you provide truly connect with your work share your process create content around your art while you're also creating art alongside your content and how to like promote and present yourself to get people to take notice and build attention and understand what the demand is for where the market is for what you're doing and then how to leverage that market and demand and then monetize it oh yeah because that's what people a lot of people are so focused on that i mean i can't really speak to that because i'm doing this as a side hustle and i'm trying to make it just like and and in your dad of four (laughs) and you're like (laughs) <laughs> well have yeah it's four right yeah yeah and, you, yeah and you're doing something on the side you're building your brand your voice and like what i teach isn't just for creatives man i, I work with right i worked with a debt-free consultant coach who wanted to build his brand online it's basically better. anybody who wants to like go against the grain build something they're proud of on the side hedge against a safe day job hedge against the uncertainty of this world and bet big on themselves doing something they love oh, yeah. that goes against great like that's that's what I, I do. Basically, how do, you, that, how do you leverage online to build a brand and a business around what you love to do? That's what I teach. And I just have a soft spot for creatives. And that was all through doing. Absolutely. You I, didn't read a book. It was. I mean, I read a lot of feed, books. Well, yeah, but feed on I, the payment. I, it's like, okay, I pick everything over here the and best. then I just funnel it into mine. Because I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, there's this dichotomy of either I'm a head football coach or I'm an artist. There's no right. overlap in. Nobody was like, hey, this is how to become a creative side hustle business coach. Yeah. This has just been by trial and error and just drawing, which turned into micro blogging because captions were getting too long on Instagram. So I started blogging after going to a conference. Um, I pitched my last day job to send me to this conference because everybody I was connecting with and growing an audience with was at this conference. And so I just was like, Hey, there's a logo designer here. There's some logo workshops. Really. I was into hand lettering. And so I got to like meet all of my idols and all the people I've been uh, building community with. And I left there like, damn, everybody is like building something with their creativity. I'm stuck in this little bubble of Waterloo, Cedar Falls, Iowa. Nobody can relate to anything I'm doing. I need to find my people. I feel stuck. I feel plateauing. And I'm building around here, but nobody values what I'm doing because nobody understands it. And so I bet on myself, went to a conference solo, threw myself into the fire, which has been a recurring theme. Like NFT NYC, don't know anybody, throw myself in the fire. Past conferences, throw myself in the fire. Lewis House, some of the greatest, throw myself in the fire. Don't know anyone. And that's where I catch little glimpses of like, wow, that's what I could be doing. So I went home, started blogging. That turned into the podcast and Sure. That turned into coaching. Just, I always thought I was going to be a big time freelancer doing projects yeah. with Apple yeah. and Nike because that's the only path I saw that you could be successful doing your thankful time. And I stumbled 
into this path and I just keep going with my gut. Dude, when I hear this, I'm getting goosebumps because what I'm trying to do, and I felt the feelings that you're talking about right now, because I'm new to this journey, you know, this is two years in. How many podcast episodes? This is number, it will be 39. Yeah. yeah. Just breaking the 10. Yeah. Two just years. breaking like the 10 <laughs> mark and then the 20 mark, it just starts getting easier. Like those are big hurdles. I love it, dude. I love doing it's, it. It's not easy. But, but I'm like the people, no. And you know, the king of podcasting, in my opinion, Joe Rogan said, I oh, wish absolutely. everybody started a podcast. And I agree 100%. Get in front of the mic. See how it works. See how putting a show together. It, it changed my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah I get better at I, I love building communications anyway, but he gave me a reason to just brush shoulders against people I never would have had a chance to yeah. have conversations with, get better at confidence, communicating, mm-hmm. um, habits, structures, routines, disciplines. Hell yeah. Oh, that's, and that's, that's what a... And it was side all, hustle is founded yeah, it was, on anyway. It was all just a gift, you know. Me, you know, I just love doing this. And this isn't the only thing you do, though. You podcast. You have your NFTs, crypto. I do a coaching. decent amount of things, but and that's as, never as where we you thought you were going to be. And and as we talked in the pregame, it's like I'm in a season of selfishness and simplification. So and that's to whittle it down to narrow. Um, there's a great book. Um, oh my gosh. There's a couple of them. Gary Keller, The One Thing, uh, Essentialism, and, oh, my God, Do Less But Better is from the book George McCown. Um, You'll have to get me. Yeah, Essentialism. Yep, and that's like the theme of it is do less but better. Do you want to be the type of person who does a bunch of things at like a C-plus effort, or do you want to just do a couple things really, 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 really well? And over the years, you know, I found a lot of success doing a lot of things, but the more I narrow my focus, the more I do less, but better, the more I simplify things, the more I'm able to like slow down and then be able to determine what's a distraction. What should I yeah. delegate? What should I eliminate? What should I push to the back burner? Where can I hire? Where can I slow down so I can listen and slowly scale versus like, how can I fast scale? It's like, right. Yeah. I, I my, my, it's amazing where I'm even at doing my thing full time with how much I've taken on, how misaligned I was in a lot of different areas, especially my funnels and my coaching programs, my offerings. Now I'm like, no, let's just get back to the basics. You know, but simplify. It's all learning. Simplify. You know, this is the first time you've done any of this. It's, <laughs> it's things. everything I wish someone would have told me 10 years ago when I was pursuing my side. I was just like, man, just slow down. Um, I learned you can really only be obsessive about like one to three things at a time. So in my life, it's family, fitness, finances. I like it. And then in my business, it's coaching, the content that goes along with the coaching, the brand awareness, getting people into the funnel, and then it's just my side hustle. What do you do for goals? We can do all the whole smart goal route, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time bound, the whole corporate stuff. But for me, it's how does uh, it work for Scotty? For me, it's first, what are my priorities or my priority for this season? And within that, it's like the power of one. What's Here's my one priority for coaching. What's my one focus during this season for coaching? Then what's my one macro focus for like a weekly objective? And then what's the one thing each day at a minimum right. that I can accomplish that keeps me on this trajectory that then aligns with the target I'm shooting for? Yeah. That way, if I'm like very intentional with what my priority focus and objectives are, that means I have this filter of like, is it a hell yes or a hell no? If it's a freelance yeah. project that comes along, sorry, this doesn't align with my priority right now. This, right. I, I, I like you. I'll explain why, even though I don't need to explain because you're a good person, whatever. But this is why I'm not taking on freelance. This is why I don't do logos anymore. This is why I don't do X, Y, and Z because I have this very intentional focus. Yeah. And if I'm intentional and I'm objective, that eliminates the emotion, that eliminates reactionary consequences of me taking on too much burning myself out which i've done like last year this time around i was super burnt out it's because i had too many priorities i was trying to be too many things to too many people i didn't have like a chain of command of like family priorities paying students in this tier paying students in boot camp tier than everyone else i'd like have free communities all spread out students everywhere and then all of that is sucking. Oh, man, sucking my bandwidth. And I've been able to balance it all these years and get back to every DM. 
on Instagram and every comment and every email. It just Can you imagine started. where you would have been if you would have done the things you're doing now, like you had said? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, man, have I just if I had I just simplify all these years ago and realize I didn't have to be everything to Thank everyone. You, Scott. I, I'm a recovering people pleaser too, so it's like I feel like. I'm always letting someone down and uh, this year like the the theme is disappoint the right people. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like okay, I can't disappoint my wife, my mom, my dad, my family, myself. Those are absolutely no Exactly. My kids, non-negotiables, right. but I'm I'm sorry, you're going to hit me up and I'm in the middle of a launch and you want to do a podcast. I'm like, dude, I'm sorry, I can't right now, but you know, I can maybe in a couple of weeks. And great people yeah. are gonna and, and, great, Scotty. And a lot of people will ghost. It's like people don't like being told no. They oh, don't I understand. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I'm sorry, I can't I've do this. I've fought through those feelings. Yeah. You know, get dumped by a couple guests, and you're like, well, I guess I'm not the most important person in the world, right? Like yeah. life happens, though. Yeah, and like, people are busy, so I'm never. Yeah. I don't ever expect anybody else to respond to me right away. If they read a message, left it on read. Like for me, I'll start a message with people Same, and dude. then Terrible daycare thought. will call. Same. Daycare will call and I'll stop what I'm doing. And, they, and and someone might get offended thinking I blew them off. I'm like, actually, no. Chain of command. Yep. Life. You have your here. priorities concrete. Yeah. That's what it if sounds you, like If for you me. don't have your priorities dialed in and priority, again, one to three things max. If someone's just starting off small, be like, dude, Nate, you're doing too much. Just do one podcast once a week, find yeah. a guest, build a queue. Don't worry about selling online products. Don't worry about coaching on the side. Just master this 100% discipline during the season, slowly scale from within versus adding all these other things. Every and person that was, listening. That was me. Yeah. Every so, person you're listening can take something from that. Just start small with one thing. Become a master yeah. and then move on. Exactly. It's uh, um, my buddy, Sean West. He was like, okay, everybody's trying to build like multiple bonfires at once but you're over here trying to build this bonfire but then this one's going down so you try to go build this one when it's just like build one bonfire that can sustain itself and then pivot and build the next bonfire right. and so i'm back to just how can i build this one bonfire that has been pretty strong but pour more into it and now i always have a side hustle I'm never i'm never not going to have a side hustle and <laughs> and now those worlds are overlapping where i get to be a creative coach for web 2 and web 3 creatives who want a new path for hustling their artwork and building an audience and building their brand and demand within a new lane of opportunity, which then brings in my love of crypto and just like everything that felt disconnected within this last year is all Merging. aligning and allows me to simplify even more. So Hell yeah. everything felt so disconnected. And now with the times have evolved and I've just stayed current with my hands in multiple things different percentages like 80 percent of my focus is here and maybe i can get 20 percent of my focus in my side hustle but now they're overlapping so much and right. it makes the game easier to play Hell for yeah. me and you get more done exactly with the same amount of time exactly and we're not getting any more of that <laughs> yeah right you know? that and that's a big thing it's like time management project management overall just self-management that's a big thing i i work on with creatives but that's stuff for everyone everyone you know everyone can benefit mm -hmm. from that self-care what sort of things do you do to keep scotty fresh because personally as a creative it can be draining giving 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 and sometimes the reward like me making zero dollars you know you started making no money too i'm sure just oh, drawn for people. so how do you continue to be motivated the uh, paychecks can't do it how no, else is scotty motivated? Uh, and i want to say like i grind i grind hard and i am i am borderline a workaholic for sure my wife is like the only one that can keep me in check um, Thankfully, but, over, but over the years, you know, I've abused relationships. I've burnt bridges. I've hurt myself working all nighters. And now I'm like, wow, it's about sustainability and longevity. Mm -hmm. So this is, I teach the art of healthy hustling as I figured out of my own, as I burn out and I learn from it and I teach from it. <laughs> yeah. So just want people to know like, Hey, I grind in a, a, a healthy obsessive way. Um, but for me, those top three life priorities, family, yeah. fitness, finances i hired a coach a nutritionist and that's been a game changer for mm -hmm. me because i grew up like the fat chunky bull cut kid who got severely bullied so that is like my inner critic is that little fourth grader still lives in me um but for me it's like I, I, one little objective at a time mm -hmm. and this helped with my coach he's like hey this this couple weeks just master getting a thousand or a, a hundred ounces of water in a day so just master that make a game out of it yep. and then it's like hey 8,000 steps per day, 10,000 steps per day. We're in diet cutting mode right now. Try to get 10 to 12K <laughs> per yeah. day. 
And then it's like, hey, just master this this food structure, you know, for each one of your main three meals, here's your food structure. Just master that for this season. So it's always like Those little one things. thing I take on at a time yeah. versus like, here's 10 things I got to do for right. my fitness. And right. then, yeah, so that's, so it's a uh, workout four or five times a week, get my a hundred ounces of water each day, get my 10,000 steps minimum each day. And here's my basic food meal structures that I yeah. operate within. You had, you said, hiring a coach. Mm -hmm. I 100% agree in those things. Some people say, well, you don't need a life coach. You don't need this. Uh, I'm not a subject matter expert in some areas where I want to be. And I think it's, uh, I mean, obviously you agree hiring people to help you because there's stuff you don't know. Absolutely. I would say that's the biggest. Um, there's three in my mind, there's three cheat codes, three hacks I like this. for whatever you're doing. If you want to move fast, you want to move faster, you want to move fastest. <laughs> okay. And so if you want to move fast, and what you're doing, find like community and form like accountability groups. And there's tons of free community podcasting. You want to get better podcast, tons of free podcast communities out there yep. like Twitter chats. I'm in a couple of Twitter chats with NFT based people who want to grow their brand and marketing focus and scale what they're doing in like a couple of discords. I'm in some kind of community for everything I'm interested in mm -hmm. crypto, NFTs, fitness, dad, chatting and learning, dad, entrepreneurs, like whatever. I'm in a little just around people who are like-minded that I can lean on, hold me accountable. That's the fast bucket. Um, faster is investing in programs, courses, books, conferences, whatever, like actually having a little bit of skin in the game yep. aside from just your time. And that's been massive for me too. You know, that's where I found my community and found opportunities to grow my business was going to that first conference. So that solidified it or taking online workshops, whatever it is, you know, that is the next level. And then if you want to move the fastest, that requires the most skin in the game. And that's hiring, like get, that's hiring coaches and mentors or getting involved with masterminds and what scaled my business to the next level was hiring my coach for the first time. It was a scary amount of money right when I lost my job too. And second kiddo was along the way, just let, let go of Viking. It was the parent company who just eliminated our entire, imagine making eliminated our entire marketing department just out of nowhere. And then invested like five grand in a coach January, 2020. Shit and, money. and we didn't have that. So I had to dip into my tax savings from 20, uh, 2019 where coaching really started taking off for me. And that was scary, but that was the best investment ever. I'm on like my fifth time hiring my coach. Wow. They live in Philippines too. Cool. So there was mornings that I'm getting up at like 4.30 a.m., 5 a.m. to jump on these calls because she's she clear did. across the world. Yeah. And that, that's been a game changer. To me, it's like if I'm going to be a coach and I don't have a coach, that's like being a doctor who doesn't believe in having doctors. Continuing your education. Exactly. We're, we're lifelong learners. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, nutrition has always been something I struggle with. Hire a, coach. Hire a coach. Hell yeah. It's it's truly it's it should be a scary amount of money because these are people who can get you the transformation you're seeking mm -hmm. at a rapid rate yep. versus I gotta learn all this shit on Google by myself right now and decipher who's legit and who's not just because right. you wanna save a buck. And I'm not telling anybody to live outside their means, but sometimes you gotta Figure Take out a, a way to bet big on yourself. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. So that's And without that's that scary. jump. Yeah, exactly. without that jump, you're not going to take it seriously. And, and to me, it's like all that work I did on paying off bills and money mindset, mm -hmm. wealth manifestation and getting rid of money blocks. Now I realize like, okay, hey, I'm in a season of a severe money block. I'm operating from scarcity versus abundance. Why am I operating out of fear right now? Is it because I'm getting too many headlines of world economic huh. crap, crypto markets crashing or oil skyrocketing yep. inflation. I'm like, okay, disconnect from the BS right now. Get back to my roots. Go back to my books like uh, You're a Badass at Making Money. I'm like, okay, I'm a money magnet. I'm a Hell money yeah. magnet. I, I, I attract money. Here's my money mindset. And literally, you know, all of a sudden, something that didn't sell on my Facebook marketplace, all of a sudden, mm -hmm. boom, this is something, want to buy this. Or somebody bought like three things from my shop or boom, I just got like three new leads for one-on-one -on -one clients that are premium. I'm like, okay, why am I always tripping? And there's no reason out. to trip when I put myself in a position and I'm just in my head, you know, I, I, to get woo-woo. I, I do believe in that stuff. You know, I believe you are what you think, speak, act, do. 
So be careful what you say to yourself. Be careful what you think. And if you want the world to take you seriously, guess what? You got to take yourself <laughs> seriously yeah. first. Hell if yeah. you want people to perceive you as a professional, but you're operating like a hobbyist, like my toddler who only does things when it's convenient and it feels Fine. good. Well, shit, you're going to be perceived as a hobbyist. No one's going to take you seriously. Hell yeah. I used to get people messaging me like, hey, Scotty, I got this idea for a tattoo. I see you really like to doodle. <laughs> If you just doodle. draw something Shit. things up, that hurts my heart, dude. <laughs> I see you like to doodle. You know, if you draw a couple things up in my ideas and I like it, I might get it. Yeah, I was like, wow, this person does not value my craft. No, not at all. At first, I used to get butt hurt and offended, but now I'm like, what am I doing to not put out that perception? That's a good way to look at of it. Of a pers- professional, mm-hmm. clearly, I'm not putting that out there, emitting that frequency. The victim mentality switches real quick when you put that cloak on and say, well, how am I going to fix it? I'm like, okay, I'll take accountability for this. I don't want anybody to think I'm just a doodler. Hell no, because you're putting in a lot of work. (laughs) Yeah, and this was like maybe three, four, or five years ago, and no one's ever said doodling ever since. Hell yeah, dude. So, but that that was just like, damn, I could either get mad and just be like, what, you don't value my craft? Or I can just be like, okay, how can I make what I do more valuable that people take notice? Yeah, I like that a lot. So I want to wake people up to do the same. If someone from Iowa can do that, mm-hmm. where everybody thinks you're from Ohio everywhere or you Idaho. go. <laughs> uh, Idaho. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, I've been everywhere. there too. I've been that too. I'm like, okay, clearly there's something I'm not doing yep. or could be doing better. Or I maybe like I'm doing way. too much where I need to like narrow my focus and simplify the game, make it more objective, easier to play and win. Hell yeah. Last thing I want to touch on before we take you to the firing range is the NFT process. Mm. I don't ex- I don't understand that at all. So if you'll walk me through it from a basis, I know you're an artist and I know you're putting digital art out there. And I have seen what they sell for and uh. I've looked at buying and I think it's remarkable, dude, what you're doing. Explain it, it to me how you got involved with that NFTs in particular, because that's different from crypto, correct? one leads into the other okay. to me it's like you should understand the basis of crypto 101 which i actually teach because i get enough people asking questions okay so that's I made a webinar. It's, okay. it's in my it's in my when um, it's available my, it's it's in my shop right now for 25 bucks for a replay and i go over all crypto 101 basics I'm not trying to sell you anything just hit me if up you want and i'll happily tell you hell yeah it's like enough people ask questions okay let me make a resource because yeah. i can't keep responding back to everyone working on an nfts 101 but basically it's like first understand crypto it's on the blockchain is what you first need to understand. You can't hack it. It's immutable. The government just can't go and voila, I'm just going to print more Bitcoin now. It just doesn't work that There's way. only a finite. So exactly. Many. Finite supply. So now NFTs come and that runs on the blockchain. And it's just a way to prove ownership digitally of a digital or a non-digital asset. Like right now, um, like real estate is being done as NFTs on the blockchain. And it's going to save a ton of time, ton of money, get rid of a lot of third party garbage. You know how long it takes to get like a house? Yeah. You know, but put it on the blockchain via proof of ownership via an NFT, like Super Bowl tickets. You buy a ticket, you get an NFT. Now you own a piece of this historic event. You can sell it and you can make profit off of it. Um, Instead of a physical copy, exactly. Super Bowl ticket. It's exactly. It's verifiable. Digital. It cuts down on scam. Like say, uh, like receipts of things coming out of China, like jewelry. Yeah. So much scam Shoes, and property. Tons, Shoes, fashion, all this scam stuff. But if it was done and registered on the blockchain, you could immediately within a couple seconds go from. back where it's from. If this is legit or not, scan a barcode. Hey, this is a fake. So, so that's, that's the a, power of yeah. NFTs on the blockchain or even like food on the blockchain. Like, oh, hey, this is bad lettuce that is, has E. coli and now there's this whole recall process. No, you can take two seconds. Okay, it came from this factory. Shut the factory down. Cut half the time and help a lot of people. That's the power of like blockchain and medical records, identity, everything on anything. this. Anything. Anything. And so where this comes in with NFTs is right now during this phase, it's a lot of collectibles and art, like the art world, you know, art collecting yeah, is a multi-billion only. dollar industry in tangible art galleries and stuff. But now it's brought on chain onto the blockchain where you can show proof of ownership. Hey, here's the Mona Lisa. Real. There's only one and it's already registered on the blockchain. These are all fakes. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. but there's big time whales out there with deep pockets who love to collect art and they just want to showcase it in their 
home digital galleries <laughs> oh, yeah. in their home yeah. like literally they're making massive screens that just show nfts and you have to show proof of ownership to even showcase this on your to light, have it on there to even showcase it because you have to show that you own it and so me i just started dabbling with it like last year sparked I, your interest yeah i saw other people doing it i had people telling me like yo you should really look into this with your artwork i'm like i don't have time to create i'm so too much pressure of running this coaching business in life to me drawing for me is selfish when i have bills to pay i get it food to put on the table and that's why i got burnt out i was like i just stopped focusing on creating the last two years and there was a huge hole i'm like wow that that's what it was i gotta i gotta start drawing again so i started drawing without forcing it to be anything without the pressure to monetize it just to draw for fun again and when i let go of forcing it to be monetized and having that pressure all of a sudden opportunities for NFTs started on the Solana blockchain. Most people just know of Ethereum. Right, they're like, you're I'm killing the right. planet, you're killing the planet. I'm like, no, actually Solana is a competitor to Ethereum. It's a green blockchain, a neutral carbon footprint. So it takes, how it is mined is different. It's no from... mine. It's proof of stake, meaning no mining, no mining like Bitcoin. And there's a lot of false information. Like Bitcoin's like almost 60% Wonder renewable. if that's intentional. Oh, absolutely. It absolutely. <laughs> right. Threatens everything. Right, yeah. But Bitcoin's like 60% renewable energy right now of how it's being mined. 40% of it isn't. And every day it's like pushing the industry forward renewable energy. There's people mining Bitcoin from volcanoes right yeah. now. So don't believe that myth. It's killing the planet. Ethereum is an energy hog, but I'm on Solana where me just minting an NFT. Minting means stamping something on the blockchain like hey my art now exists on the blockchain i minted it okay that takes less than published th would published be another published okay. the blockchain okay so that takes less energy than like two google searches okay yeah so, people don't understand how much energy a google search takes and that's part of the it, it, exactly. problem too and the same people complaining are the same people who have christmas lights up <laughs> they use banks they wear gold and like the mining industry is horrible and they play a lot of video games they're always on the internet i'm like yo Talk to me about it. Come please. on. You're, you're being very hypocritical <laughs> on something you don't understand. I didn't understand so it I either. So I had you here, dude. I, I didn't, didn't understand either. it either. And I thought the same things until I got educated. But so I, I, I mint and create on Solana. And there's things that run on Solana like art, NFTs, um, decentralized finance, a new revolution of banking, video games where it's like you own the assets in a game yeah. and then you can take them from the game and sell them for actual money. Like there's going to be kids. There's kids all around this world and like wild. third world countries who are playing these NFT video games, making way more money than their parents and making way more money than like the middle class adult who works a corporate day job and they're playing insane. video games. I know. Their kids are going to grow up in the metaverse playing video games with it. It's nuts. So for me, it's I started small, started from zero. You know, I built an audience in this realm over here, but I came over here. Nobody knew anything about me. Just humbly start from zero, not feel entitled. Started putting my art out there, and it just slowly gained traction. Yeah. And yeah, it's been doing pretty well for me. And now it's like, okay, now I get to like, I've I've onboarded students into NFTs to sell their art and stuff because they, cool. they were struggling not getting any traction in their head playing the instagram game trying to sell prints trying to like yeah. do events and do merch do freelance and i onboard them over here and now they're just gaining more success yeah. than they're Very ever cool. like being able to take care of their families get their families out of debt you know buy their mom a new car being a creative yeah being Things a creative people selling say, your oh, artwork that's just fun to do exactly so to <laughs> me where i'm at right now is getting into like social media instagram back in like 2014 2013 before it really took off. Yeah. You know, the early days of social media is like this yeah. to me now, the early days of NFT. Cool and, I felt, and I felt late and it's still so early. It's still so early for crypto. It's still early for all of that. And there's risk to everything, clearly. Right. And I invest what I am willing to lose. You know, I, I'm, I'm smart about what I do. I'm not hurting if the crypto may... Um, markets are tanking right now. To me, I'm just like, ooh, buying opportunity. And we just had like Tesla's dropping, right. ooh, buying opportunity. Google's <laughs> dropping, buying. My index funds dropping, ooh, buying opportunity. Right. Mm -hmm. But that was a mind shift uh, yeah, switch yeah, after you lost, after you got rid of the debt. And mm -hmm. that's another thing that does nothing good for you. No. Same thing. If we would have, wouldn't, if we would have had crippling debt, this podcast never even a thought in my mind because I got keeps a family. You, keeps you a slave. To yeah, it does. Living what you're doing. a very small life. Not what you want to be exactly, doing. Right? Exactly. So, Hell yeah, yeah, get out. Of, I, like, I like to teach, uh, teach people how to be confident in what you're doing, how to locate, pinpoint the value you're doing, how to grow it, then how to 
get freedom from it, how to pay off debt with your gift, yeah. put yourself in a position to then go full time and change your family tree. Do what you love. Doing what you love. Hell yeah. That's, that's it. And then NFTs and all that are just another way for me to tap into a new opportunity, provide more value to other people and creatives, my sweet spot, as well as make a very high reward asset in return. Like I'm selling my artwork for know, crypto dude, that awesome. can like radically scale as an investment. Overnight even maybe. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm building now during down markets. So when the next bull market comes around, nice. my traditional investments are good. My crypto investments are good and my family will be good and my business will be good. So oh, I'm yeah. like, okay, this is a very scary time. Let's dig deep deeper and not live in fear and let's double down our efforts perfect sentiment yeah and on don't live in fear america yeah if one, one thing we can pass along yeah everybody can benefit from hearing that absolutely and in control what you can control and don't oh, yeah. don't listen to the news oh my god please <laughs> someone's probably gonna get mad and like i love cnn and i love fox news i'm like I they're don't. both trash i don't love any of it they're both trash <laughs> not, all of it's trash not even local news yeah but Dude, I appreciate your time. I know you are a busy person. So for you to come here and sit down with me as someone who admires what you're doing, I really do appreciate it. But before you're out of here. Yeah, fire away, man. Firing range, dude. This episode of The Firing Range has been sponsored by Joe and Brittany Wilson at Vine Valley. They are licensed separately with over 30 years living right here in the Cedar Valley. Shout out to Joe Wilson. What's up, buddy? Hell yeah. Um, even if you just want to know your choices, you're not interested in buying or selling. Maybe you're just curious about what's out there. Contact Joe or Brittany. Joe's number, 319-486-8115. Brittany at 319-230-6922. Scotty Russell, you ready to go to the firing range? Let's get it. First question, east or west? West. Sausage or pepperoni? Pepperoni. Pizza rolls or by the slice? <sighs> by the slice from Casey's. Football or basketball? I got one coming for you next too, dude. Football since I played football in college. Lakers or Bucks? Oh, my God. We're Bucks going through, right now. Going for the throat, dude. Bucks right now. To be fair, you were the only Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan I knew prior to them getting Tom Brady. So shout out to I, you. I've liked them since Orange Cream Hell Sickle yeah, days, 94, <laughs> yeah. 95. We sucked for a long time. You, I will uh, forever hold you as the only Buccaneers fan I know. I know a couple now these days around here. Of course here, you do. But 20s or 30s? 30s. Crypto or NFT? <sighs> Told you NFT you for this season. Country or city? City. Pizza with pineapple or without? Without for me, but whatever floats your boat. I'm not going to judge you. <laughs> Podcast, a coach, or creative? You have to pick one. I'm sorry, dude. Creative. It's the yeah. roots. Hell yeah. Thank you for your time, Scotty. Oh, man. This was great. I Thank you it. for uh, connecting with me and building a relationship. That was cool. I I operate like I nobody knows me around here. So oh, yeah, dude. Well, I do, and cool. I'm watching. And I appreciate, I appreciate what you're doing. It gives me what you spoke about. You know, you don't know you can accomplish those things. It's a lot harder being the first than it is being the second. And you've already done what I'm trying to do, Scotty, and I appreciate you coming But you're on. doing it with four kids. <laughs> hey, man. So that's a different thing. And I think a <laughs> last thing is you never know who's watching. Hell yeah. That's, I appreciate that's, that. That's a big thing. You never know. And you never know who's watching your podcast right now. I was like, damn. Okay, I'm ready to make moves now. Right. Hell yeah, dude. I appreciate that. Thank Hell you. Yeah. Thank you. Special thanks to my friend Katie Hine at Mattress by Appointment, Cedar Falls, for her sponsorship of season two of The World with Nate.